2 Corinthians 9, 8 says, Yes, God is more ready to overwhelm you with every form of grace so that you will have more than enough of everything. Every moment in every way, he will make you overflow with abundance in every good thing that you do. <clears throat> Part of the journey that Cinderella went through was learning to accept the slipper that she wore. In this story, she wears a number of slippers. First, it's a slave and abused. And then she ends up in that glass slipper of favor and position and beauty and grace. You have to be gracious and classy to wear glass. Mm -hmm. You have to change the way you walk. Mm -hmm. Think about that. So what changes in your life? A whole lot. The way you stand. Mm -hmm. There was a at the end of Miss Congeniality. She's like, I'm going to miss wearing high heels and what they did for my posture. Because they made me stand up tall and they make my chest stick out. And I was laughing. <laughs> it makes you walk a little different. Because you're not the frump slave walking around thinking you're nothing. Now all of a sudden you're the princess and everyone's looking. And she goes back and has to put the other shoes back on. I don't think they were probably as comfortable. I love that specific movie. She says, these glass slippers are more comfortable than you think. Maybe they were. We think of them as, oh my gosh, I can't imagine wearing glass. That probably would break my neck and the shoes. <laughs> but somehow she runs in them. I still can't get over that. I can barely run in flats, let alone heels. <laughs> Barefoot, yes. She had to come to the place where no matter what shoes she was wearing, she was content with who she was in here. Because it's really not about the shoe that you wear. It's about the person in the shoes. God made a shoe that only fits you. He gave you a job and a calling that only you can fulfill. No one else. When the Holy Spirit spoke to me and said, who's going to raise your kids? Who else is going to be their mama? What he was saying is the giftings I put in you were intended for them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Ooh. We often as a mother feel like, well, I didn't, do, I didn't do good enough. Or your kids make you feel like that. Well, Mom, you didn't do this for me and you didn't do that for me. Mm -hmm. You are exactly what they needed you to be. Even in your failings. This is what God showed me about failings. God used Judas's failings because otherwise we wouldn't have redemption. God used Peter's failings or we wouldn't have his story. God used the failings of Rahab. She was the right person at the right time with a red cord. No one else probably had red. But because she'd been a harlot, she had the color. Who cares? God used her, stuck her in the lineage of Jesus. She was the right person at the right time. He uses Ruth. He uses Bathsheba. He uses people all the time. He doesn't care if he has to take you out of the slipper that was covered with ash. He will put you in the glass one. Because that's the way he is. He'll change your shoes. But it's still the shoe that was designed for you. And no one else can fit it. So when we get down on ourselves, or we feel like, oh, I'm just not doing this right. I can't do this. Yes, you can. With Christ inside of you, you can. This is the shoe that fits you. Wear it. And trust in God's grace that in your weakness, his grace is made stronger in you. He is ready to overwhelm you with every form of grace. 2 Peter 1.3 Everything we could ever need for life and complete devotion to God has already been deposited in us by his divine power. For all this was lavished upon us through the rich expression of knowing him who has called us by name and invited us to come to him through his glorious manifestation of his goodness. 
God has actually designed a life and a calling for you. And he's not repentant of his gifts that he's placed in you. No one else could do them and no one could fulfill them the way he has called you to do them. God knows you and he knows the shoe that fits you and he made it for you. Yeah. Zephaniah 3.